Hi Cubbies, this is Miss Kate and I have a craft idea for you this week. This week we're continuing to talk about worshiping God only because he is our king. Um, and so I was thinking for a craft, you could make a crown. My kids love making crowns, so I actually borrowed one from their room that they've already made, but we'll probably make a new one. Um, but you just took two pieces of paper and cut making a jagged line and then tape them together on the sides to make it big enough for their head. And then they have colored designs on them that they like. Um, and then um, they wear them around. But what my idea for the craft is that you could make a crown to remind yourself that Jesus is king. So this baby that we're welcoming that we celebrate at Christmas time is our king. Um, and then maybe you could put it under your Christmas tree um, or a place in your house that um, where you are celebrating um, just to be as a reminder that we're worshiping the king that came to die for us so that we could be with him forever. Um, so there's my idea for the week. I hope you have fun making and decorating your crown. Hi, Cubbies. Hi, Cubbies. How's it going? We are very excited to see you again today. We are. And actually, we have two Cubbies lessons left until Christmas time. Whoa, it's almost Christmas time? It's almost Christmas time. Oh man, I need to buy more presents. Yeah, more my, sh people. my shopping's pretty good at this point. Really? Yeah. You're so prepared. Well. It's amazing. It's been a year where there's been more time at home. So there's been more time to be prepared and shopping online and stuff at home. So, okay. yeah, but Christmas is so, so fun, and uh, we, are, no. we are loving the Christmas season. Yep, it's great. Yes, love it. Christmas carols, and the Christmas story we're getting to tell over and yep. over again, and reading the Bible about where, like, Jesus' birth, and reading yep. all about that, and, and like... And apples. And apples, and cookies, and yep. lots of good stuff at Christmas time. So Christmas lights? Oh, I love oh, Christmas lights. I love They're Christmas the best. lights. Yes. I agree, Cubby Bear. I agree. So yeah. so many things to be so thankful for at Christmas time. So boys, really true. boys and girls, are you all having a wonderful Christmas season so far? Let's see. Raise your hand if you have some Christmas lights up somewhere in your house. Yes. A lot of you. That's great. Yeah. There are so many fun things to do at Christmas time, and I hope that you're all enjoying all of that. So we have two more lessons. So we have this one, and then we have next week's lesson, and then we take a few weeks break for Christmas time. All right. I don't know, it'll be good, right? It will be great. Good, Cubby, do we have a good time prepared tonight? We do have a good time. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh, you good. You guys should get really excited. Yes, get excited. Are you excited? Wait, I, I didn't hear you. Are you excited? Yeah! I guess so. We got lots of excitement out there today, which is great. Okay, boys and girls, well, we're gonna get started. So, All right. here's Miss Kate with your craft. Welcome back from craft time, boys and girls. Now, after craft, you know what we do next. So, wherever you are, come close to the TV or the computer, because we're gonna sing our cubby songs together. So, stand up, and let's sing our cubby song. We are one of cubbies, we're happy all day long. We know that Jesus loves us, that's why we sing this song. We hop because we're happy and we jump and shout for joy. For Jesus is a friend to us, he loves each girl and boy. Jesus loves you so, so much. And so let's sing our verse song that talks about how much God loves us and that he gave his son for us. So let's do it together. So it's 1 John 4, 11? Wait, I forgot it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Is it 11? No, that's not right, is it? Okay, say it again with me. Say it again. 1 John 4. Four, ten. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, one more time, just so I can get it. Here we go. First John four ten. God loved us, sent sent His Son, sent His Son, sent His Son. God loved us, sent sent His Son. First John four ten. Well, that was really good. Now. 
we're gonna do it a little faster again. I know that some of the cubbies last year really like to try to go a little faster, so we're gonna try it again. But here's the thing, is that you can't go lickety split super fast. You have to stay together with me. Okay, and I can't go all that fast. So let's do it together. Stay with me and we'll go a little faster and we'll see if you can do it. Here we go. First John 4, 10. God loved us and sent his son, sent his son, sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. First John 4, 10. Good? Okay. If you think you can do it a little faster, I want you to put your finger on your nose. Okay, I think we're gonna try it then. Here we go. Faster, but not too fast. Stay with me. First John 4, 10. God loved us and sent his son, sent his son, sent his son. God loved us and sent his son. First John 4, 10. Did you make it? Good. I barely made it. So, okay, so I think we'll stop at that speed today. Maybe when we come back after Christmas time, we'll try and do it even faster faster. So maybe you should practice at home to make sure you can do it nice and fast. So let's actually go on to our next song, which is Jesus Loves Me. It tells how much Jesus loves each of you. So really loud, unless you have a little brother or sister sleeping. If you have a brother or sister sleeping, not super loud, but otherwise really loud, I want you to say, Jesus loves me. Can I say it again? Say, Jesus loves me. Okay, now if there's someone else in the room or if there's someone in the other room, I want you to yell to them and say, Jesus loves you. Go. Yes. Boys and girls, Jesus loves us all so much. So let's sing our song about it. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him be. strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Boys and girls, the Bible is God's word that he gave to us and it tells you how much Jesus loves you. It tells you stories about Jesus' life. And boys and girls, remember, everything we read in the Bible is true. It is a book of God's words to us. And we can get to know him if we read it. We know him better every time we read it. And we know how he would have us live and act and be and the things that he would have us do. So I would encourage you, if you've never read your Bible you should pick up, pick it up and take it to an adult and you can ask them to read you some of those stories in there or read some verses. The Psalms are awesome. They're songs of praise to God. The whole set, the, all the Psalms are just songs. So you can even pick up a Psalm and sing it and make up a tune to it. Boys and girls, there are so many ways in which you can kind of meet God as you, as you read your Bible and spend time getting to know him better by his words. So I encourage you to do that at home with your mom or your dad or your sister or your uncle, whoever is at home, uh, to engage in that with them, to do that with them. So, uh, oh, we forgot. I forgot those letters. Oh, no, I forgot the letters again. Oh, boys and girls, someone needs to remind me to remember to find that A and that C before we before we send, send you the cubbies lesson. I need your help again, okay? So here we go. Let's sing our song to find our letter A. Gotta find that A first. So here we go. Where is the A? Where is the A? I mean, is it in here? No. Oh, my goodness, I'm always losing things. Oh, wait, you see it? Really? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Tell us what it stands for. Tell us what it stands for. All have sinned. All have sinned. That's right. Our Christmas themed A today 
stands for all have sinned. Now, is that just, does all mean like some people? No. All means all people. Everybody. How about me? Have I sinned? Yep. How about Mr. Andrews? Mr. Andrews sinned? Yep. yep. How about your mom and dad? Have they sinned? Yep. How about you? Have you sinned? Yep. Because sin, boys and girls, is anything we think, say, or do that disobeys God. So let's say your mom asks you to do something and you don't do it. Is that sin? Yeah. Let's say you were playing with your brother and you got upset because he took your toy and you got really mad and said something unkind to him. Is that sin? Yes. So boys and girls, we all sin and we all are in need of being forgiven for that sin, but we can't forgive ourselves for that. We're not capable of making ourselves right with God again, who is holy. And so boys and girls, that brings me to our next letter, which is the letter C. And the letter C, oh, it's, I, I, I don't know where it is. So let's sing it and we'll, we'll find it together again. You're so good at finding it. So you can help me again. Here we go. Where is the C? Where is the C? You see it? Where? Oh, thank you for your help again. That's so good. Here it is. Here it is. Tell us what it stands for. Tell us what it stands for. No, not Christmas tree. Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Christ, Jesus Christ died for us because I know we said we say all have sinned every person has ever sinned ever every sorry every person has sinned who has ever walked the earth except one man that man was really special he was fully man and fully God he was the son of God and he never did anything wrong Jesus never sinned and because of that that makes him the perfect person to be able to die on the cross for us so that our sins can be forgiven. He sacrificed himself or gave himself up for us so that I can be forgiven when I sin, that you can be forgiven when I sin, and that we can come to God and in his presence. I am so happy about that, boys and girls. So um, yeah, I hope that that is a joyful thing to you too. Um, so we are actually going to go on because I think we need to see Cubby today, right? Well, we saw Cubby earlier, but I think we're going to visit Cubby on the farm. So let's go visit Cubby, but I need your help again. So please, would you call out Cubby with me so we can call him back? He might be busy playing and we got to call him out. So here we go. On three. One, two, three. Cubby. Much bigger than we are. 
Timothy walked up really close to the elephant and waved his arm above mm. his head. He said, Mr. Elephant, if you see me, lift up your trunk and stomp your foot one time. Well, what happened then? I'm sure the elephant saw Timothy when he was standing so close. Nothing happened. The oh. elephant didn't blink an eye. <laughs> he looked frozen, like a statue. Huh. Arf, 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 arf. So that big elephant you saw wasn't real. The sun was making a shadow of the toy elephant on the side of the woodshed. <laughs> oh, that's why the elephant wasn't moving or talking. The elephant wasn't alive. He was just a toy. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Hey, I think I hear Timothy calling me from the playground. Come on, Katie. Let's go play. I'll see you later. Hey. Bye, Cubby. Bye. Bye, Katie. Oh, that's funny that he saw the shadow with the son of an elephant that made a big shadow on the wall, and it was just this little stuffed animal elephant. <laughs> oh, well, I bet they're going to have a wonderful time playing on the farm today. So, boys and girls, now we're going to hear from Mr. Andrew for our lesson today. So, stay tuned. Hi, Cubbies. All right, are you ready for the lesson? Wasn't it fun seeing Cubby Bear today? Remember what they saw? They saw this little elephant. But they saw a shadow and they thought he was a real elephant. Would he talk to them? Nope. Would he move? Nope. Why wouldn't he move? Because he's not real, right? He's just a little toy. That'd be pretty silly to think he would move or talk or do stuff. Well, kids, we're going to talk today about something that happened to the Israelites. The Israelites started worshiping idols. They forgot to worship God. and Instead, they worshiped statues that were made out of wood or bronze or iron. Now, can something out of, made out of wood talk or do things or hear you? No. I mean, it'd be pretty much... So they worship this idol called Baal. It'd be kind of like, like, what if we called this little elephant Baal? And said, Baal, I need you to help me. I have a lot of problems in my life. Can you help? Baal, I'm running out of food. Can you help me? He's not doing anything. He's, he's not moving. He's not helping me. Why isn't he helping me? Because he's a toy. But the Israelites were worshiping idols that were just the same. Well, they weren't quite the same. Maybe, maybe theirs looked a little bigger and a little more impressive. Elephant! Can you help me? I need money. Still a toy. Okay, wait, let's try a bigger one. That'll probably work. Mr. Bale the bear, can you give me crops so I can eat? Can you make it rain? He's still not talking to me because he's still not a real person or a real God. He's just a stuffed animal. But the Israelites kept asking Baal, just a carved statue to help them. And God was not happy about that because they forgot who God was. So God sent his prophet Elijah, and Elijah came and said, Because you were worshiping idols, 
it is not going to rain. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. That's a long time for no rain. So one day Elijah come along, came along and he said, All right, it's been long enough, Israel. You need to decide whether you're going to worship God or worship Baal. So he called all the prophets of Baal, all the people who told the Israelites they were supposed to worship Baal. And he said, here's what we're going to do. Okay, you can set up your God over here. And now we are going to have a sacrifice. So here, we'll put the sacrifice on the altar right here. There's a sacrifice. And prophets of Baal, you can pray to your God. And I'll pray to my God, and whoever's God sends fire down from heaven will be the true God. And the prophets of Baal said, okay, we'll try that. And Elijah said, why don't you go first? So it was early in the morning, so they did. So they walked in front of the prophet, or the, uh, the um, altar and the sacrifice, and they prayed to their God. They said, Baal, please send fire from heaven. And, you know, maybe he's an idol, so maybe they had their, their idol right there, their Baal. They said, please send fire from heaven, Baal. Right on the altar. Ready? Go. Fire. Please, Baal. Please. Please send fire from heaven. And nothing happened. So they kept asking, please, Baal. Please send fire from heaven. Send fire. Still nothing. Nothing. And they went on the whole day like that. And Elijah kind of made fun of them a little bit. Elijah said, maybe you need to be louder. Maybe he can't hear you. Maybe he's busy right now. Or on a trip. Or maybe he's asleep. But Elijah knew that it just wasn't a real God. And he wasn't going to say anything to them. Finally, they went the whole day and nothing had happened. And Elijah said, all right, now it's my turn. But before I pray for fire, we are going to get the altar wet. So he got a bunch of pitchers of water and the people poured the water on the altar and they poured it and they poured it and poured it. And pretty soon the whole thing was covered in water. There was like water all over the place. See, look at all that um, water. Yes, definitely water. Water everywhere. Okay. So then Elijah said, all right, people, come close to me. Come close, come close, come close. This is so that you can know that the Lord is God. And he said, God, so that all these people might know that you are the true Lord, please send fire from heaven. And he did and it burnt up the sacrifice and even the altar it was all burnt up under the fire it was amazing god showed that he is good and that he is the one true god he is the one who created us all he is the one who can talk to us and help us when we need things he is the one who can save us from our sin isn't that great kids do you remember our verse for today? I believe it's Jeremiah 10.10. 10. The Lord is the true God. Kids, maybe we can sing that together. I think we have a song to help you remember it. Let's see here. Oh, look, Miss Laura found my guitar for me. And she's going to come and help us. Remember the song. Oh, did it stop? Maybe not. Okay. All right, here we go. Jeremiah 10 10. Why don't you sing it first? Uh, okay.
final track with four hoors. Wait, no. With four shoes, my horse is shod. My horseshoes, my horse is shod. With four shoes, my horse is shod. That is not Jeremiah Sansom. It's not. Nope. No, it has nothing to do with horses or but shoes. My, but my horse has. My horse. You have a horse? Has four shoes. Really? <laughs> yeah. So. So. I think you noticed him out there. Nope. Uh, the Lord is um, the true yes. God. You just got done telling the story of Elijah. Right, 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 right. The I just, I, got, I was thinking God. about the horses and then it made so much sense. But okay. it didn't really. Nope. Okay. Let's, let's you try remind it one me more again. time. Here we go. Yeah, let's help him sing this song. The Lord is the true God. The Lord is the true God. The Lord is the true God. Jeremiah 10 10. Okay, Mr. Andrew, you can do it this time. Okay. Come on! Award him a people pod. Award him. A people pod, award him a people pod. What? You're making that face that's not right. again? Uh, it's still not right? I mean, good try, but that's not right. I mean, who doesn't want a people pod? What's a people pod? Like a pod? Like a, like a, little, a little house you put uh, yeah, in or for something? People. Alright. I mean,. Definitely not in the Bible. We're people. So, um, oh. the Lord is the true God. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Again, boys and girls. Remind me again. one more time. One more time, kids, please. Here we go. The Lord is the true God. The Lord is the true God. The Lord is the true God. Jeremiah. Lord, we praise you because you are the one true God. You are the one who made us. You are the one who knows us. You are the one who can help us, God. And you are the one who saved us from our sins. Help us to know you better. Mm -hmm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for listening, kids. And now you get to go tell your verse to your parents mm -hmm. and get yourself a sticker. Here we go with Cubby's game time. Mr. Andrew is ready and equipped with a baby, so we should be good. Okay, I don't expect you to be equipped with a baby. I expect you to be on your wall. Find your wall. So you're ready to go. And I know all of you are being good listeners, so that if I say green light, red light. Oh, good job. Yellow light. Green light. Red light. Oh, okay. Back to the wall. To the wall. Okay. Let's try again. Yellow light. Red light. Yellow light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Yellow light. Green light. Go to the wall. Back to the wall. Go, 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 go. All right, let's try again.
again. Red light. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Yellow light. Green light. Oh, to the wall. Back to the wall. To the wall. To the wall. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's do our next game. Well, I like that game so much, but you know what? It's nighttime. Oh, nighttime. Good night, boys and girls. Nighttime. But really, don't you just want it to be daytime? Daytime! I know Liliana does. <laughs> but then it's nighttime. Everybody sleeps at night. Including Liliana. Some of the time. But now it's daytime again! Daytime! Great! Oh, we love the daytime. We love the daytime. And we like resting at night. Nighttime. It's nighttime. Mr. Grand, you're sleeping over there. Okay, it's daytime again. Daytime again. Okay, lights up. To the wall. To the wall. Find your wall. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to do the Jesus loves or God loves game, you know, where you kind of run to the other side. But we're going to do it with different animals this time. So I'm going to say God loves, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's do like God loves kids that slither like snakes or something like that so let's try that one god loves kids that slither like snakes okay stop okay stop let's try another one god loves kids that fly or flap around like birds whoosh, whoosh. good flapping whoosh. good flapping let me see those big wings big wings come on Good. Okay, stop. God loves people that, or God loves kids that, hmm, oh, walk like squirrels. How does a squirrel hop around and walk? Looking for nuts and acorns and such? Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. Let's see some squirrels. Okay, stop. God loves kids that... Swim like sharks. Let me see your sharks. Oh, excellent, excellent. I see one or two dorsal fins. That's really good. Yeah, yep, good. Okay, all right, stop. God loves kids that... Have another one. Skitter like mice. Skitter like mice. Like a mouse. Real fast, like a little mouse. Sometimes they like jump and hop a little bit too. <laughs> they like bread a lot too. And cheese, you know. Okay, stop. God loves kids that can act like a bear. Pick your favorite bear and act like a bear. Okay, stop. God loves kids that hop like a bunny rabbit. God loves kids that hop like kangaroos. I bet those jumps are bigger. Let's see those kangaroo jumps. Let me see them. Yes, so good. Okay, stop. To the wall. To the wall. That was really good. I liked that game. Thanks for playing. Okay, actually, let's find a little bit of space. We're going to finish with Cubby Says. Cubby Says. Remember, if Cubby says it, you should do it. But if Cubby doesn't say then don't do it. And I might try to trick you. We've done this before. Sometimes I try to trick you. So get ready. Here we go. Don't be tricked. Don't be, don't, don't let me get you. Here we go. Cubby says, bend your knees. Cubby says, stand up tall. Cubby says, bend your knees. Cubby says, stand up tall. Cubby says, skip around, skip. Cubby says, tiptoe. Tiptoes, tippy toes. Cubby says, stomp around. Cubby says, march. Yes. 
Stomp again. That's so much fun. Oh, I don't think I got anyone. Okay, Cubby says stop. Cubby says, Mr. Andrew, back up. Back up, Mr. Andrew. Cubby says jump two times. <laughs> Cubby says jump four times. Oh, good counting. That's tricky. Cubby says turn in a circle. Cubby says turn the other way. Cubby says turn one more time. Oh, I didn't see one of you do that. Can you turn around again? The girls, you're getting so good at this. I'm having trouble catching any of you. Okay. All right. Cubby says, smile big. Cubby says, look sad. <laughs> Cubby says, pretend to cry. <laughs> Cubby says, look surprised. Cubby says, look mad. Cubby says, look happy. Cubby says, give yourself a hug. Cubby says, don't do that anymore. Cubby says, full germs. Cubby says, put your one hand on your shoulder. Cubby says, put your other hand on your shoulder. Take both hands off. Did I catch any of you? You're getting so good at this. Ah, oh, boys and girls. So good. Okay, I think that's going to be it for Cubby's game time today. Uh, Mr. Andrew, Cubby says you can, like, let go of your arm. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so we've got our last element of the night. Yep. Story time. It's time for story time. Now, just to warn you, today's story is a little silly. It's called A Christmas for Bear. A Christmas for Bear. Bear had never had a real Christmas. He never had a tree with a sparkling star or candy canes or even gingerbread bears. But he'd read all about it. Clearly the most important part was pickles. Hmm. Pickles. One frosty night, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping at his front window. When he opened the door, there was Mouse. Hmm, I can't quite read it. Small and gray and bright eyed. Merry Christmas, cried Mouse. Maybe, said Bear. Bear agreed to have a Christmas party. He never had one before. Do we open the presents first? Mouse asked eagerly. M Mouse asked eagerly. Presents? Bear shook his head. Most unseemly. cried Mouse. No presents! We shall sit around in the tree and eat. I might even read a poem. Surely that will do, said Bear. Then Bear went to the kitchen to get the Christmas pickles. But when he came back, no Mouse. Mouse, where are you? Mouse did not answer. Bear heard a tiny scurrying sound. It was coming from upstairs. Bear started to climb the steps to his bedroom. The scurry sound was under his bed. Mouse? Yes, came a muffled voice. Are you looking for a present? Mouse peeped out from under the bed. He had a bit of dust on his nose. 
perhaps, said the mouse. Unnecessary hogwash, Bear scolded. We have pickles, remember? Oh, said Mouse. And Mouse trudged behind Bear back to the living room. Bear went to the kitchen to get the cheese. But when he got back to the living room, no Mouse! Mouse! You're looking for your present again, aren't you? Maybe, came a tiny voice. It was out in the hall. Bear opened the closet door. There was Mouse, small and gray and guilty-eyed. The pickles are from France, declared the bear. But surely, said Mouse, and furthermore... Continued Bear, I shall be reading a long and difficult poem. Then Bear headed back to the kitchen to get the cookies. But before he got there, he quietly turned and tiptoed back to his living room. No mouse, of course. Mouse! Mouse scampered out from behind the tree, tinsel dangling from one ear. Pickles and poems, bellowed the bear. That is the Christmas spirit. Yes, bear, sighed Mouse. Mouse sat in front of the crackling fire. Bear served them pickles and cheese and cookies and tea, smelling of cinnamon and oranges. Bear nibbled and sipped. Mouse did too, but his tail was sad. Bear cleared his throat. Mouse looked up. "'Twas the night before Christmas," Bear pronounced, "'when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse." Bear stared sternly at Mouse. The pickles are wonderful, whispered Mouse. Bear continued, The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. Bear paused and glanced over at Mouse. Mouse took a mournful bite of a pickle. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, Bear repeated more loudly. The stockings! Mouse leapt up, his eyes bright as Christmas candles. You do have a present for me, he cried, pointing at the mantle. You have stockings! Certainly not! Impossible, monstrous assumption, mumbled the bear, but he was smiling. Mouse scrambled into his stocking and popped back out with a package wrapped in sparkling red paper. Bear looked eagerly as Mouse tore off the wrapping. It is the, oh, it is the best present ever, Bear announced proudly even if it is not a pickle. Inside was a shiny silver telescope. See? Oop. Bear hurried Mouse out into the crisp winter night. Mouse pointed the telescope toward the glowing moon. Most wonderful, said Mouse softly. Thank you, Bear. Yes, indeed. Bear smiled, then looked at Mouse. Well? What? Mouse was busy studying the stars with his new telescope. Mouse? You didn't forget, did you? Bear looked most stricken. Pickles and poems, said Mouse. 
and turned the telescope toward a nearby fir tree and presents. There, peeking out from the snowy branches, was a big red bow. Bear hurried over and pulled out a wooden sled with shiny red runners. I've always wanted a sled with shiny red runners, said Bear. Thank you, Mouse. You are... Bear swallowed. You are an excellent companion. Someone of, of whom I am most fond and... Uh... You are my best friend, too, said Mouse, with a happy flick of his whisper whiskers. Merry Christmas, Bear. Merry Christmas, Mouse, cried Bear. Then Mouse and Bear jumped on the sled and swooped down the hill under the shining stars of Christmas. The end. Good night, kids. We'll see you next week. <laughs>